What's up guys? It's Lindsay with the blog Repurpose and Upcycle and I'm going to show you how to take a dated cabinet and give it a two-toned makeover with a tan wash and just some regular old paint. Here's what the cabinet looks like before I did anything to it. It is a decent cabinet. It's not the highest quality wood. The reason I can tell is if, I, if you look at the sides, uh, you can always tell how high quality it is based on um, the seams and the way the wood comes together. And there is uh, some marks on the top that I need to sand through. And my first thought was I was going to remove the, uh, the decorative wood at the bottom. I felt like that dated the piece of furniture. So luckily I was excited that I was hoping that I could just unscrew those pieces and then the bottom pieces of wood would come off. Unfortunately, as I tried to remove these pieces, I realized the bottom piece was attached to the entire side. The front piece was attached to the entire front. So in order to remove the bottom, I had to remove all of it. So I kind of regrouped, decided I would have to think about that later, and I proceeded with taking the hardware off, taking the cabinet fronts off, and the drawer out. I realized that they had nailed the the drawer front into the drawer with not only screws but nails too which led me to believe that's probably why I couldn't get the bottom of the cabinet off too because it's probably nailed into the rest of the cabinet so I proceeded with the uh, the rest of the cabinet fronts taking them off and the next step is to strip it now QCS is a fairly new stripper. This was the first time I had ever used it and it is a completely safe stripper. There are a lot of strippers on the market that talk about being safe, but this is completely safe. You could use it inside your house. There are no VOCs, no fumes, uh, no harmful ingredients, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to try it and see how it worked. Now my point with stripping this piece of furniture isn't to strip the entire thing down, but to get that heavy plastic factory finish off of it. Uh, like I said, this isn't a super high quality piece of furniture. Uh, it, it does have a sprayed factory finish on it. So my purpose with the stripper was to pull that off and uh, not necessarily pull the stain off. Once the top coat was off, I started with a palm sander. I normally start with like a 120 grit sandpaper just to get the top portion off. And then I move from a 120 to like a, a 220 and then a little bit finer if I need to. This is what it looked like after I had sanded it. It's not perfectly sanded, but you can also see those little wet drops. And that's where I got a little impatient and didn't wait long enough um, in between like the stripping and the sanding. So just FYI, make sure you wait a good while between stripping and sanding. But this is what it looks like. After I sanded, I decided to use a pre-stain. The reason why I decided to use a pre-stain is because when I added the tan wash, I wanted to make sure that it was an even finish, that it didn't look blotchy. Once the pre-stain was applied and dry, I used a drop cloth over all the the raw wood uh, so I could paint the rest of it. As you can see, I'm painting the drawer fronts and I'm painting the inside with regular paint. Now it's time to paint. I'm using my Wagner Fine Finish Sprayer with a Fusion Mineral paint. Now don't hate me, but I did not apply a primer. Now the Fusion Mineral paint is known for no sanding, no priming. Now I did sand, I don't believe in not doing anything. 99% of the time, I do believe in using a primer. But because this paint is formulated to be used without a primer, and I'm going from a dark color to another darker color, I thought I'd give it a try. Once the first coat was done, I did use a super fine grit sandpaper to sand it lightly before applying a second coat of Fusion Mineral paint. And then after I applied that second coat, it was ready for top coat. I applied a regular old polyurethane. It's a water-based polyurethane. And I did apply it with a foam brush. I like to use a foam brush for top coats sometimes because after I'm done, I just pitch them, especially if it is a, like an oil-based 
because uh, those are harder to clean. So I did uh, one coat mostly. I did two coats in some spots that are more heavily touched. Uh, and I let that dry for a little while. Now it was time to take the drop cloth off. And once I took the drop cloth off, I did have to go back and do some touching up with some sandpaper to scrub off a few areas where I got a little blue paint on the raw wood. Now for the fun part. For this, I decided to, well, it's what they call a paint wash or a tan wash. I am using some regular old tan latex paint. I'm mixing a one-to-one -one ratio water to latex paint. I'm mixing it really, really well. And then I'm taking a lint-free cloth and I'm applying this paint wash or tan wash to the surface. I'm applying it in the direction of the wood grain. So essentially I'm wiping it on and then I'm either going back over it or just wiping it off. And you can see this is a great way to mute uh, wood tones or say if, if, if it's a little bit red or a little bit orange and you're wanting to mute those tones, a paint wash is a great way to do it. And the cool thing is you can mix any paint with a little bit of water and create this paint wash effect. Now I wanted a lighter wood look so that's why I went with this tan color uh, and you can see I'm, I'm just getting it on there first and after I get the paint on there I'm going to go with long smooth strokes in the direction of the wood grain um, to just even it out. Getting in those grooves was a little bit harder, uh, but ultimately you just want to follow the wood grain. So I, you know, you know, if it's a vertical wood grain, go vertical, horizontal, go horizontal. If you just follow the wood grain, it, it should look beautiful. <laughs> Now I did do a second layer. I felt like the first layer still wasn't to my liking, but that's the cool thing about a paint wash, a white wash, color wash. Uh, you know, it's up to you how, whatever the color you want to create. So since this wasn't quite light enough, I just went over it a second time. And because this was raw wood, it dried really quickly. This paint wash really soaked in the wood. So it was, you know, maybe an hour later I was able to apply the second coat. Here she is after that second coat. Isn't that wood beautiful now? I will tell you, it looks even better once I add the top coat. For the top coat, I'm using a Minwax One Coat Water-Based Polyurethane. I love a water-based product. They, they don't yellow like an oil-based will. And I'm applying it with just a synthetic brush and just following the wood grain again. Uh, on the top, I, will, I did two layers, two coats. Uh, just because the top will get more use. Uh, on, the, on the sides and the bottom, 
I just did one. Even though it says it's a one coat, I did go ahead and put two coats on the top. Like, because you can't ever be too careful, especially on a high traffic area. The last thing I did was put the hardware on. Um, I drilled the over the existing holes uh, and I went ahead and bought new hardware that was the same size. I thought about using the existing hardware, but it was a super cheap plastic with a metal coating that you could bend really easily. And I thought I'd be better off just buying new. I actually found some natural wood poles that were the same color as the tan wash. Um, and so even though they're super simple, I decided to go with them. I thought it would pull everything together nicely, and I feel like it does. Also, I put all the cabinet doors and the drawers back on. And one thing, I did paint the hinge hardware the same color as the, the, the dresser doors. And some people probably aren't going to like that, but I thought since I was going with the two-tone look and I wanted that natural wood-toned poles, I thought it would look weird if the hinges were anything but the color of uh, the doors, and I wanted to keep it just two tones. I didn't want some random metal in there. So like it or not, I did paint over it uh, with the same color as the doors, and I think it looks fine, and I, I did clear coat it too to make sure you know the paint wouldn't chip. All right y'all here she is. So here is the final product. I think it turned out pretty darn well. The blue is a little bluer than I thought it would be but overall I think it looks beautiful. My favorite part guys is that tan wash. Mm, if I could do it over I think I would have done the entire thing in that tan wash. You can still see some of the marks where uh, some of that stain, just couldn't get it out. But overall, I love the two-tone look. And I love the way the colors blend together. I love that the inside is blue. And I think this would be a nice piece for like a boy's room or a little boy's nursery. I think it would be really cute in there. And I'm just really pleased with how the tan wash came out. Uh, I love that you can kind of even see like the undertones and it kind of blends well with the blue. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a few things about how to make over a small cabinet. Thanks for watching.